Hi. In the last video, we talked about MapReduce. And uh, we talked about it in kind of a general abstract way. This video, we're going to see how MapReduce uh, was used as a central piece of uh, some new um, distributed systems that uh, were invented uh, in Google. So uh, Google, in 2003, uh, realized that they have this kind of peculiar situation that they have a lot of machines, computers, that are distributed throughout the company and um, that um, together they might be able to do some really large computations, but they are, each one is its own independent uh, computer. So what they um, designed is a system called uh, HDF, a Google file system, which, in which there is a master that basically knows where all the data is, and the data itself is distributed across many um, computers um, along the company. And uh, each computer basically has a small piece of the action. Uh, so you take a very big file and you chop it up into a lot of small pieces. Then you actually replicate each piece uh, two or three times. And then you just distribute all the pieces to uh, all of these computers that are all around the company. And um, now you basically have the system that you can use to in parallel process this very big file because the data is already sitting uh, on the many computers. So basically how MapReduce matches to this is that you think about the big data uh, that you have initially and it is really stored on all of these workstations. And each workstation can do map operations on the pieces of data that it has. And it can start doing reduce operations as much as it can on the piece it has. Only when it finishes its own reduce, then does it need to communicate to, with other computers. So uh, this really allowed um, very massive computations across the company uh, using very standard hardware um, and uh, and systems and networking. So that would give rise to Apache Hadoop, which was basically the open source implementation of the Google file system and MapReduce. And um, now the file system that, that uh, we use um, in Spark is HDFS, the Hadoop file system, instead of GFS, the Google file system. But it's basically the same idea. And um, the compute system before it was Google MapReduce, now it's called Hadoop MapReduce. And um, it is a very successful and very large um, software environment. There's all these different packages that uh, have been added to the original Hadoop. Uh, contributed by various companies and universities. And they all work around this uh, distributed file system and, um, and distributed computation. Apache Spark is one of the later um, arrivals to, to, this, uh, to this family of software. Um, it was invented in 2014 by Matei Zaharia. And uh, the main difference that it had from Hadoop is that it is using memory instead of uh, disks in order to store the, um, the data. So that allows it to be much faster in some uh, aspects. Now, Spark is a system that is built in Java. The whole Hadoop ecosystem is built in Java. Um, and so you can program Spark in Java, but that can become very tedious, especially for data analysis tasks where you want to do the same simple operation with some variation over and over again in an interactive way. Using Java in that context is just uh, very tedious. So they invented a different language that would go on top of uh, 
of uh, Java that is really a Java-like program, a programming language called Scala. And that is the programming language in which the bulk of uh, Spark is programmed. Um, the main problem with this is that it is not a very popular language, so you kind of have to, um, you have to, there's a learning curve to, to getting to really understand it. But on the other hand, if you really want to get into um, Spark and improve on it and add your algorithm to it, um, you'd probably need to learn Scala. PySpark is simply a Python library for programming uh, Spark. Um, it does not always achieve the same kind of efficiency, but it is much easier to learn, and that is what we're going to use. So let's look a little bit at the uh, software uh, of, uh, of Spark, specifically PySpark. So the first uh, important um, object that we use in, in Spark is the Spark context. And basically, um, it is the piece that connects our software that sits uh, on the controller node for the whole cluster. Um, and it connects us to the whole infrastructure, the Spark, through which Spark runs all of the worker nodes. So the control of the other nodes is achieved through um, this, this object. And when you are running something with this object, you only need one. So it's, it's, it's an object, maybe we call it usually SC, but you don't use more than one. The system basically will give you an error if you try to start more than one. So that's how you initialize it. You just say SC is Spark context, and there's various parameters that we will look at some that uh, would give you a non-default configuration. You can run SC Spark on your laptop itself because Spark can also run just on a single uh, machine. Okay, the second uh, element that is important is the uh, Resilient Distributed Dataset, or RDD, which is basically the abstraction that describes the distributed data that you have on the different uh, machines. So, it is basically a list. You can think about it as a list, but it is a list that you don't have direct access to because the list is distributed over uh, all these different machines. So in order to, to do operations on this uh, list, um, you need to use special commands that, that um, basically are designed to run in parallel and are based on MapReduce. Okay, so this is the main data structure in Spark. So when the data is in this RDD form, the elements in the list are manipulated through RDD commands. And RDDs can be created um, from a list on the master node or more typically from a file. And the file can actually be distributed across the machines um, in the HDFS format. So RDDs can be translated back into a local list using the command collect. Okay, so here are some basic examples. So the first example, um, we're just initializing an RDD. So we say RDD is SC, the Spark context, parallelize this list. Okay, so it created this RDD. And now we can do operations like MapReduce on the RDD. Okay, so the RDD dot map lambda x to x squared and reduce x and y to x plus y. So this is what we did in the previous um, video. And here you're working in RDD space and you're doing these operations you don't have direct access to the elements of the RDD, because if you had direct access, then you would be uh, enforcing some kind of order, and um, that, would, that would make it really not uh, parallel computation. Here you're freeing it to do what it thinks is the best way to do it. Okay, so transformations 
um, can, uh, are basically operations that take an RDD and map it to a new RDD. So here we have again this RDD that is uh, just the list 0, 1, 2. And then you say that A is equal to the um, RDD map lambda x to x squared, okay? So now you have a new RDD called A, and in order to see what is in the RDD, you actually have to use the command collect. That would bring it back to the uh, head node, and now you can, uh, you can see it, because you're running on the head node. Now, the thing to remember is the, the, the power of uh, Sparks and RDD is when you have really, really large um, uh, arrays, okay? So arrays of maybe uh, 10 million or um, 1 billion elements, okay? And the whole power is that you're distributing it to all of these machines, and then you can do the computation in parallel. Of course, you're always tempted to just collect all of the data, to have it um, just on your machine, and then it's much more intuitive and easy to compute with, but then you're losing uh, all of your parallelism, and the collect operation itself can be extremely slow, right? So you want to um, not use collect unless you really want to uh, get all of the data in the RDD, and the RDD should probably be pretty small. So you don't need to necessarily look at the whole RDD if you want to see something. You can just take the few first elements, and that's a very, very convenient thing to do many times. So here we have uh, an RDD of size uh, 10,000. And um, what we're asking is, um, to get the first element or the first five elements from this and uh, print them. Okay, and that is what uh, it will do for us. That will not take a lot of time because you're really just taking a small number of elements. You can also just get a sample of the RDD. So let's say that you have a thousand, 10,000 elements um, and you want to see just six, you can use the command sample and this command will basically randomly sample and give you about six. It's not going to give you exactly six necessarily because it's done in parallel, but um, it will give you about six elements chosen at random from the whole, um, from the whole uh, RDD. So the result of that is a new RDD that is much smaller, and you still need to collect it to make it, uh, to, to see it as a list. Sometimes you want to do that simply because you're debugging your program, and you're, um, you want to try your program first on a small uh, RDD before you try it on the big RDD that might take uh, a few minutes uh, before it computes. And sampling is, in general, uh, an operation that in machine learning we like to do. So that was a brief uh, preview of, um, of, uh, of the um, operations on, in, in Spark using PySpark. And the next video, we're going to look under the hood and see a little bit how it is all organized. See you then.